Um, first of all, I want to welcome everyone to Boston. If you're like me, then you booked your flight in December and you told the customer service lady that you're booking your flight to go to the Boston Marathon. Because I've basically been telling everybody since the day I found out that I was in the marathon and running with you guys. Um, I was born in Framingham 37 years ago, so I have some Boston roots. Um, my dad raised me to be a diehard Pats and Red Sox fan. And my mom raised me to be a diehard Lobster and Ranch Hopper fan. And my grandmother didn't call me Carlin, she called me Pallet. <laughs> so um, Boston is in my blood, and I love being in the city. This is one of the reasons I stalked David, literally, for weeks before he officially told me I was accepted to run with all of you. Being here, and especially being asked to speak tonight, truly is a dream come true. I'm honored to share my story of why that this particular marathon for this particular cause was a must on my to-do list in life. So can anyone remember when running six miles scared the hell out of you? I can. It was my first training run for my first half marathon five years ago. But honestly, standing right now in front of you, I can say I don't just like running. I love it. However, I never thought to run the Boston Marathon until the tragic events of April 15th, 2013. A voice from within spoke to me, and I knew I had to run for Boston. The other voice said, but you're not a fast runner, how are you going to get in? That year I happened to meet Bill Gastro, a, a former runner of this team, and he let me know that he ran the Boston Marathon for MS. I said, wait a minute, you mean I can run a marathon for my cause? I knew that this had my name written all over it. The decisions I've made over the years led me to stand before you today. I believe that every day we have a choice to look at life from a positive or negative perspective. We have the power to allow tragedy to create purpose and take action rather than waiting for life to happen. I know I'm here with all of you because I've chosen to walk, or in our case run, a life paved by optimism and opportunity. To start, it was October 1997. I couldn't feel the water hitting my arm in the shower. Then my left side fell asleep and then my torso went up. Within a day, I lost vision in my right eye. I was an invincible 19-year-old sophomore at Indiana University until I was given my diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. MS, the heck was MS? I had no idea. Thankfully, I was told to look up the National MS Society. I read that MS was different for everyone, that the symptoms vary, and that there were treatment options. Yes, I was really scared, but I was comforted by the love and support from my friends and family. However, any woe is me thoughts soon vanished when two of my best friends died 10 months apart in separate car accidents, the first a month after my diagnosis. I share this as part of my story because accepting their deaths was much harder at my age than accepting my MS. Rather than feel like life was unfair, I felt fortunate to be alive. I wanted to experience all that I could, not only for myself, but for their spirits too. Within the year of this, I had my first of many aha moments, and I declared a mantra I still say today. I will plant my feet all over this planet as long as I can. After graduation, I moved to Dallas, Texas. I was 23 when I happened upon a lunch and learn presented by my company by the director of the local MS 150, now called Life MS. I walked up to the director and said, I have MS. It was the very first time I shared it with anyone that understood what that meant. Though I didn't own a bike and I was anything but a runner, I decided to step out of my comfort zone and join a friends and family team. The society asked if I would appear on the local news to promote the bike ride. My dad flew out to crew, my friends made signs to cheer me on, and I met other people like me. But most people I met were much older, and had, but I had the earlier diagnosis. So I made up a joke that I had MS longer than I was legally able to drink, and that I had never been an adult without it. But jokes aside, I liked fundraising, I liked to make a difference, and I liked, loved the experience so much that I did it again the following year. In 2009, 
In 2006, whoops, skip section. Um, <coughs> fast forward to 2004. I followed my dream of living on the beach and moved myself to San Diego, California. Soon after I arrived, I called the society to get involved. Upon hearing my name, they asked if I was related to the chapter president, Alan Shaw. I laughed, totally confused, because I was not related to that Alan Shaw, but I was related to an Alan Shaw, my dad. Coincidence? I think not. I had an instant family. This family turned out to be incredibly helpful when at age 26, I had my next exacerbation. I woke up and couldn't get out of bed. My left leg was paralyzed. This would last for a week. And though I couldn't drive because I couldn't feel my clutch, I was able to take my, what I called, wiggle of a walk to the gym and use her company bike, lifting my leg onto the pedal and making sure to stay active with my right. After a couple weeks, my body was back to normal, but I was forever changed. This was where I would adopt my next mantra, move it or lose it. So in 2006, I signed up all by myself and walked to my very first 50-mile three-day challenge walk in San Diego. At this point, my dad had walked in five challenge walks, so it was an inspiration to me. It was my turn to show that someone with MS could walk for others with MS. So the next year, I convinced a girl that I befriended with MS to join me. And the following year, we formed a team called Team Optimistic, with the M and the S capitalized. I gave my first MS speech at that candlelight dinner, and the drug company of Porta selected our team for a documentary about the challenge walk. Each year, I looked forward to seeing my extended MS family and creating awareness and assisting others with MS. It felt like my purpose. MS was literally creating a path of amazing people and experiences in my life. So upon feeling this silver lining with all of my being, I declared my next mantra. Setbacks are stepping stones in disguise. By the time I walked my fourth challenge walk, I think I'm a bit of a runner. Then one afternoon in late 2009 while at the beach, some friends challenged me to join them for a half marathon in the beginning of 2010. And after several beers, my arm was twisted. But little did I know this would be one of the best decisions of my life. By the end of 2010, I had run three half marathons. I had been bitten by the run bug hard. And each race, I planted my feet somewhere new, each time a little faster. I had MS, but MS did not have me. Fast forward to 2011, and after being let go from my job in San Diego, I created a six-week cross-country road trip filled with 15 cities, lots of friends, and now lots of runs, and moved myself to Wilmington, North Carolina. I also started my blog, Strangers to Friends. I couldn't help but reflect on the serendipity and the form of friendships, especially with people that I met because of MS. Without fear, I followed my intuition, allowing one closed door to be the opening of another. <laughs> Within the next year, I appeared on the Anderson Cooper Show to speak about my MS, and I had three more half marathons, including the New York City half. The day I ran my stitch, I got the tattoo Love Life on the back of my neck, at the base of my brainstem, and the top of my spinal cord, where I knew my lesion to be. I thanked my body for each step it allowed me to take, and every experience MS had motivated me to accomplish. I still get excited when a runner behind me notices it and asks me about it. I like to call it my bumper stick. This brings me to 2012, and again, I promise this is my last baby. But I heard a whisper and a good girl on the beach to take on the mountains, which is what brought me to where I'm living now in Denver, Colorado. Within three months, I ran half marathon number eight and signed up for the Portland Marathon. My friends followed along on Facebook, watched how I not allowed the label or the disease to hold me back, and called me an inspiration. After that marathon, I swore on everything. I would never run another one. <laughs> Famous last words. The following year, 2013, was really tough. I broke my fifth metatarsal on my right foot. Four months later, I was in a horrible bike accident that launched me face first onto the street, shattered my two front teeth on impact, and caused my back and neck muscles to tighten up so badly, it took another five months before I could run again. Being forced to be still from freak accidents that had nothing to do with MS 
was almost harder than the precedentness. But while healing my foot without surgery, I was forced to rely on my left leg, the one paralyzed years before, which to me was a silver lining. So nine months post-foot break, I drove to Moab, Utah for my first time and PR'd my 90 half marathon. To date, this is one of my proudest moments because I had to mentally and physically overcome a lot to make it happen. So here I am today, in the best shape of my life, ready to make my dream come true with all of you and take on 26.2 miles. My journey with MS seems to run parallel with my journey of running. Think back to the moment you decided to commit to the 2015 Boston Marathon to run with this team. You knew we were giving up sleeping in on Saturdays, but could any of us breathe in all the snow? I salute your commitment because you made my Colorado winter look like a walk in the park. But just like our commitment to accepting MS and doing something about it, we put one foot in front of the other. We can't predict the storms ahead, but we can choose to power through life. Just like we powered through 18 miles on a 30 degree day. By saying yes to this marathon, I said yes to so much more. I made a chair for the choice to take on training for the past four months and raise money for my cause. None of us can control what happens to us in life, but we can control how we respond to it. And I couldn't ask for a more epic way to use my MS to motivate me than to run a marathon with all of you. So we have everyone with MS, thank you for your choice to be here so that we can run as a team and do all we 